In this section, we're going to talk about perhaps one of the most overused cliches we tend to hear around treatment, and that's, are you working your program? Now, that's not to say that clients shouldn't be working their program, but the point that I want to make here is how many people really know what it means to quote unquote work the program? And so what ends up happening is the people around the client know enough to say, are you working your program? And the client knows enough to say, yes, I'm working my program. And that's about as far as it goes. And that's exactly how the peer-based support part of the plan ends up falling through the cracks. Well, we've got a really easy solution for shoring up this part of the foundation, and that's PDF-5 for Module 3. It's titled Peer-Based Support, which technically includes all the recovery programs. But this PDF in particular focuses primarily on 12-step recovery. And I wrote it for the specific purpose of giving families a bird's eye view of what it would look like to see someone who's fully engaged in all aspects of that program. Clears up any confusion about all the names of the different programs or how to understand meeting schedules. It explains the literature that the different programs use and how actually reading that literature is part of working a program. It spells out the difference between going to meetings and doing the steps and working with a sponsor and getting involved with service work, all of which are significant elements that fall under the umbrella of working the program. Now, the one thing that we need to talk about when it comes to making sure that someone else is working their program is boundaries. Because one, you obviously can't work the program for them. And then two, this is an area where the line between being in control versus being controlling can end up getting a little fuzzy. So what I did here is I also included the videos from module two that talk about boundaries and control and the difference there between whether your loved one's an adult or an adolescent. So for example, if you're the parent of a minor, you're ultimately responsible for their welfare. And in this case, making sure that they're complying with their treatment plan is gonna be something that falls under your responsibility. Then on the other hand, if your loved one's an adult, you're not responsible for their recovery. And so it becomes a matter of what's acceptable to you with regard to how they manage their recovery and the impact that has on your relationship with them, as well as how that might impact the rest of your family. So again, the first step in any of this is being really clear about what it means to actually work the program. The second part is knowing what the appropriate boundaries are for this. So if you do happen to find yourself in the position of feeling a little unsettled as to whether or not they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, use the material in this section to make sure you're solid in understanding what this ought to look like.